Hi, I'm Chris Wardlaw for Car Gurus, and this is the refreshed 2020 Jaguar XE. Originally designed and engineered to take on the best driving compact luxury sedans in the world, the XE is a rarity on American roads, which makes it appealing to people like me. And now with this refresh, Jaguar resolves several complaints about the car, but other shortcomings won't be addressed until the next complete redesign. In this review, I'll show you what's changed, I'll show you what still needs to change, and I'll tell you which version of the XE I recommend. So, without further delay, let's go for a drive and take a closer look at the 2020 Jaguar XE. One of my favorite things about the Jaguar XE is the fact that you rarely see them on the road. In a sea of Audis, BMWs, Lexuses, and Mercedes, this Jag stands apart. And not just because of my test car's Caldera Red paint job. Jaguar simplifies the XE lineup for 2020. Now it includes the P250S with rear wheel or all wheel drive, and the P300R Dynamic S with all wheel drive. Prices start at $39,900 for the P250S, while the more powerful and athletic P300R Dynamic S goes for $46,295. My test car is the latter model, equipped with a slew of options that loads the car up with technology and dynamic enhancements. The window sticker came to $63,125, including a $995 destination charge. If you're wondering what the CarGurus recommended version of the XE is, I'd say you should get the P250 if you just want an entry-level Jaguar, and the P300R Dynamic if you value speed and handling above all else. It really is that simple. As far as the styling is concerned, Jaguar has redesigned the front and rear ends, adding a new grill, new full LED headlights with automatic high beam operation, new front and rear bumpers, and new wheels. The company says the goal was to give the XE a wider, lower, and more aggressive look, and I'd say the changes do just that. This is a good looking car, and I really must praise the optional 20 inch wheels on my test car. They look great, they hide brake dust, and they're easy to clean. Jaguar gives the XE an all new interior for 2020 as well. Upgraded materials, improved door panel storage, and a new control layout modernize the XE. The steering wheel and the seats are redesigned, a sport shift gear selector replaces the old rotary design, and the new driving mode selector is similar to what Jaguar uses in the F-Type sports car. Speaking of sports cars, you're going to be a lot happier with a Jaguar XE if you think of it as a coupe with a couple of extra doors. One of the things Jaguar couldn't fix with the 2020 refresh is back seat space. It is nothing but tight for adults in terms of both legroom and headroom. Regardless of where you're sitting, it's not easy to get into or out of this car either. Once you've plopped your butt into the new front seats, however, you'll be quite comfortable. The test car has 16-way power adjustment, heating and ventilation, and comes with a heated steering wheel. The overall fit here is snug, but you'll be able to drive all day with little discomfort. Storage is improved, but it still isn't a strong selling point, and while the 12.1 cubic foot trunk accommodates multiple rollerboard suitcases, I couldn't cram more than one full sizer into it. Depending on the design of your suitcases at home, your results may vary. As a part of the XE's new interior, Jaguar's InControl Touch Pro Duo infotainment system is available for 2020. It combines three screens, a 12.3 inch digital instrumentation display, a 10.1 inch primary infotainment screen, and a 5.5 inch primary climate control screen. I suppose I really ought to get used to this approach since all cars are gonna be like this in the future. And while Jaguar's latest system is easier and more intuitive to use than I recall from my previous go round with InControl, it still needs work. And no, I don't say that solely because I'm over 50 years of age. The system loads slowly and it can be slow to respond, fingerprints are a problem, sun glare is a problem, small icons and virtual buttons are hard to use while driving, and the system doesn't offer natural voice recognition. Find the nearest Starbucks. Sorry, I missed that. Please say a command. At least there's a volume knob on the center console, and you can adjust both volume and cycle through radio station favorites using the steering wheel controls. I like the climate system's temperature adjustment knobs too, and how the seat heating and ventilation systems are baked right into them. It's also nice that you can drive with the stereo information on the lower screen with the navigation and traffic data map live on the upper screen. The instrumentation cluster looks great too, even if using the driver information system is sometimes cumbersome and the speed limit data isn't always accurate. Additionally, this is the first Jaguar to get a wireless smartphone charging pad, and the XE is now available with a clear sight rear view camera with a live video feed. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, aren't Jaguars unreliable? What's it gonna cost when all this stuff breaks? 
It's true that the company does not have the best reputation in this area, but here's the deal. Since most people lease luxury cars, maybe reliability is not really an issue at all. Besides, Jaguar includes five years and 60,000 miles of warranty coverage, roadside assistance, and free scheduled maintenance. Plus, you also get five free years of in-control remote and protect connected services, including fast access to roadside assistance and SOS emergency calling. Speaking of safety, the XE either includes or is available with a long list of driver assistance and collision avoidance technologies. Without naming them all, I'm just gonna focus on what it was like to use them. In a word, frustrating. The adaptive cruise reacts too strongly when catching up to slower traffic or when a car cuts into the gap ahead. Plus, sometimes it wouldn't engage, only to give me the green light moments later. Is there any explanation for this? No. Also, the lane keeping assist system had trouble identifying moderately faded lane markings, and when the paint on the pavement was fairly clear, system performance was inconsistent. As a result, I did not enjoy using these systems, and so I left them turned off. But that's okay, because the XE P300R Dynamic S is an exciting car to drive, even when you're just slogging down the freeway. This is a communicative car. The steering is alive in your hands, you hear plenty of road texture, and you feel it too, and sometimes too much of it, in spite of the available adaptive dynamic suspension. Every Jaguar XE has a turbocharged 2.0-liter 4-cylinder engine and an 8-speed automatic transmission. In P300 R Dynamic specification, the engine delivers 296 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. That's 49 more ponies and 26 more pound-feet of twist than the P250. According to Jaguar, the XE P300 R Dynamic S accelerates to 60 miles per hour in 5.4 seconds, and the transmission behaves in accordance with the three primary driving modes, which include Eco, Comfort, and Dynamic. That's quick enough, but the XE's advancing age is evident. Though 75% of its underlying structure is composed of aluminum, contributing to a base curb weight of less than 3,400 pounds, the car feels a little bit loosey-goosey when driving hard on a favorite road. The cabin tends to creak quite a bit too. As far as ride and handling go, I thought the adaptive suspension could have done a better job of soaking up bumps when the car was in comfort mode, and it should have eliminated more body motion in dynamic mode. Also, the XCR Dynamic S could use a more soulful soundtrack. The engine note is delightful, but it's muffled. And when you use the excellent paddle shifters, the exhaust system doesn't snap, crackle, or pop, much less provide evidence of downshift rev matching. Finally, the bigger performance-oriented brakes on the R-Dynamic S can be grabby around town. Bringing this car to a slow, smooth stop isn't easy. But in spite of its quirks and flaws, I liked the Jaguar XC R-Dynamic, and in part because of its outlier status in its segment. It's definitely fun to drive, but it doesn't beg to be driven. When you buy a compact luxury sports sedan, you've got lots of choices. After all, everybody except for Lincoln is making one. Though I like the Jaguar XE, nothing about it, aside from its great looks and its rarity on the road, is particularly compelling. Every competitor to this car offers something more. Whether it's value, interior room, cargo space, technological sophistication, driving enjoyment, reliability, or a superior combination of those elements. So, make sure you choose wisely. Be sure to read my full review of the Jaguar XE at CarGurus, and if you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For all of us here at CarGurus, thank you very much for watching.